Everybody settle down and get your Bible. Everybody settle down and get your Bibles. We'll begin the message now. To begin the message tonight, before I even read any scripture, I don't know if you realize it or not, but every day in America, every day in this country that we live in, United States of America, 2,989 kids witness the divorce of their parents every day. Every day in America, 3,288 teenagers will run away from home. 3,200 today. Teenagers, almost 10 a day, commit suicide, with almost three times that number attempting it. Every day in America, 438 teenagers are arrested for drinking. 211 teenagers will be arrested for drug-related crimes today. Today in America, 2,861 teenagers dropped out of school. 1,629 teenagers are placed in an adult jail for some reason. Every day in America, 1,106 teenage girls become pregnant. Every day in this country, 8,219 teenagers require, acquire a sexually transmitted disease. 8,000 a day. 6,000 a week. In the year 2000, 1,688 teenagers acquired AIDS. If I didn't believe the Bible and I didn't have God as my witness and the Holy Ghost inside me, I would say there is no hope. But thank God, thank God, thank God, there is. I'm going to begin the most unusual message I've ever preached. I've never preached a message quite like what I'm getting ready to preach tonight. For you that hear me preach all the time, it's going to be a little bit different for you because I'm going to give a lot of thoughts and statistics, but I am convinced as I'm standing here, the Lord laid it on my heart. And since then, about two months ago, He has confirmed it with all kinds of phone calls, newspaper articles, and all kinds of things that are happening. Open your Bible, please, to the book of Revelation, chapter number 9. The book of Revelation, chapter number 9. If you know anything about the book of Revelation, you know that the book of Revelation has divisions in it. There's the first few chapters there talking about the church and doctrinally even churches during the tribulation. And then we have the rapture taking place in Revelation chapter 4, verse 1. That means that anything past chapter 4, verse 1 has never taken place. Anything you see similar to anything, chapter 4, verse 1, on to chapter 19, verse 11, is simply setting the stage ready for what the, when the real thing's coming. There's a door open three times in the Bible. Every time a door's open, somebody goes up. There's one in the book of Proverbs where he says, come up hither. There's one in, uh, in, uh, in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 when he says, come up hither. And then there, there's one in Revelation chapter 11 when the two witnesses of God says, come up hither. In Revelation chapter 4, there's a door open in heaven and somebody goes up. That's John, the beloved. The Bible said Jesus loved everybody, but he had a special love for John. So John becomes a type and picture of the church, the body of Jesus Christ. So in Revelation chapter one, 4 and verse 1, God says, come up hither, the church goes out. In Revelation 19, 11, the behold, the door is open again, somebody comes down. This time it's a white horse rider. His name is called Faithful and True. And in righteousness he doth judge and make war. I mean, brother, he, when somebody's going to come, they're going to say, 
whose side you on? And he's going to say, I didn't come to take sides. I come to take over. And buddy, guess who's going to be behind him on them white horses? Me and you. That's right. You say, I'm scared of horses. You won't be scared of these. You wouldn't, you wouldn't get hurt if you fell off. You got a glorified body. And I'm telling you, everything from chapter 4, verse 1 to chapter 1911 is what we call the tribulation period. There are four trips through the great tribulation. Seals, bowls, trumpets, vials, just like there are four gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. They don't, they're not chronological. They overlap each other. So you take four trips through the tribulation in the book of Revelation from chapter 4, verse 1. It's interesting to me, it's extremely interesting to me that the verse I'm going to read you is during the great tribulation. Look at Revelation chapter 9, verse 20. Chapter 9 and verse 20. And the rest of the men which were not killed by these plagues, yet repented not of the works of their hands, that they should not worship devils. You see that? They'll be devil worshipers. And idols, they're going to worship idols of gold and silver and brass and stone and of wood which neither can see, nor hear, nor walk. Get my light ready, Blake. Now, the Bible said in verse 21, notice it carefully, neither repented they of their murderers, nor of their sorceries, nor of their fornication, nor of their thefts. You understand all them words in verse 21 except one, sorcery. And every good Bible teacher I know says that the word sorcery has about three or four meanings, and one of the meanings of the word sorcery is pharmaceutical, where we get our word pharmacy. If God would have said pharmacy in, in 2,000 years ago, nobody would have knew what it meant. So he put the word sorcery, pharmaceutical. In other words, the Holy Spirit, through John the Apostle, saw that in the last days, in the tribulation, that we would have a generation living of drugs. And brother, we are there. Tonight, we are going to center our attention around one certain problem that has hit this country like a whirlwind. This problem is getting worse and worse and worse every single day. Ladies and gentlemen, you have no clue, most of you, how bad that it really is. But I'm going to let you see tonight in just a minute. The message tonight, the curse of crystal meth. Why would I take an entire service tonight and deal with with a drug because this drug is different than all of the rest of them. There are more people being hooked tonight on crystal meth than cocaine and heroin put together. Right here in these local areas, they bust a meth lab usually weekly. Uh, uh, over a hundred and something of them last year in the three counties of Burke, McDowell, and Rutherford counties. I introduced you tonight this message. Listen carefully. I destroy homes. I tear families apart. I take your children, and that's just the start. I'm more costly than diamonds, more precious than gold. The sorrow I bring is a sight to behold. If you need me, remember I'm easily found. I live all around you in your schools and your towns. I live with the rich. I live with the poor. I live down the street or maybe next door. I'm made in a lab, but not like you think. I can be made in the kitchen sink, in your child's closet or out in the woods. If this scares you, it certainly should. I have many names, but there's one you know best. I'm sure you've heard of me. My name is Crystal Meth. My power is awesome. 
Try me, you'll see. But if you do, you'll never break free. Try me once, and I won't let you go. Try me twice, and I'll own your soul. When I possess you, you'll steal and lie. You do what you have to just to get high. The crimes you'll commit for my narcotic charms won't be worth the pleasure you feel in your arms. You'll lie to your mother. You'll steal from your dad. And when you see their tears, you'll feel very sad. You'll forget your morals and how you was raised. I'll be your conscience. I'll teach you my ways. I take kids from their parents and parents from their kids. I turn people from God and separate friends. I'll take everything from you, your looks and your pride. I'll be with you always, right by your side. You'll give up everything, your family, your home, your friends, your money, and you'll be all alone. I'll take and take till you've nothing more to give. And when I'm finished with you, you'll be lucky to live. If you try me, be warned, this is no game. If you give me the chance, I'll drive you insane. I'll ravish your body. I'll control your mind. I'll own you completely. Your soul will be mine. The, nightmare, the nightmares I'll give while you're lying in bed, the voices you'll hear from inside your head, the sweats, the shakes, the visions you'll see. I want you to know these are all gifts for me. But then it's too late. You'll know in your heart that you are mine and will never part. You'll regret that you tried me. They always do. But you came to me. Not out of you. You knew this would happen. Many times you were told. But you challenged my power and chose to be bold. You could have said no and just walked away. If you could live that day over, now what would you say? I'll be your master. You'll be my slave. I'll even go with you when you go to your grave. Now that you've met me, what will you do? Will you see or not? It's all up to you. I can bring you more misery than words can tell. Come take my hand. I'll lead you to hell. You're going to see some people now for about four minutes. These people were arrested and then to two or three years later arrested again. Look what just a few short months done to these souls. Get that light for me there, Blake. Thank you. Eight months later, Two and one half years later. One and a half years. Three months. You see the sores that break out on your face. Four years to this poor lady. Some drug addict. Look at it tonight. Thirty three years of age. One month later. Almost thirty four. Thirty four years old. Four years later, at 36. 38, I'm sorry. Finally, 40. Still only 40 years of age. That's what they don't tell you down there at the Pizza Hut parking lot. That's what they won't tell you at the party. You know why they got them sores all over them? Where they feel like they call it meth mites are crawling on your face. And you scratch your legs and arms. Ten years took that girl from that. Look at their arms. Were they skin scabs and rashes due to picking of the skin? They say that about 80% of the guys coming into prison now are meth addicts. Listen to this. Give me a little volume. Then information flows, then cases are made, then things happen, then that beautiful magical line. Popularity around the world, 
creating as many addicts as cocaine and heroin combined. In America alone, there are one and a half addicts and rising. They are men and women whose lives have been shattered by the drug, by getting addicted. Her addiction tracks the history of the meth epidemic. She started using it soon after crystal meth came on the scene. I was back and I was praying with my daughter, and I was sitting at the full time. And I was sitting just as I was sitting okay. I was not going to finish that baby because of my issues. After her daughter, Michaela, was born without meth in her blood, Debbie swore she did clean. But after marrying another addict, Debbie continued to use, even as she gave birth to three sons. If he hadn't been used to drinking, I think this is different. You can't live on anybody or places that do that if you want to stay control. You can't. It was just a matter of time. Finally, in 1998, Debbie's meth addiction led to a charge of child endangerment, for which she was sent to prison. She began to fear she might lose her children permanently. And then I was thinking, and she was as good as possible, and I was going to make it. I was going to stay clean, I was going to make my kids bad, I was going to leave my husband, I was going to make it. I was going to be one of that 22% that never goes back. I wasn't one of that 22%. When I overdosed, I marched in that field, and I was in it. And I walked up to PMTs. And that was the last time I had to do that. That was the last time she saw her children. I want to talk about that for now, for a few minutes. We're also going to illustrate for you the curse of crystal meth. Three things I'll say about it tonight. One of the things I'm going to say um, would be the cause. The cause. This drug is referred to by many names, including meth, speed, crank, chalk, go fast, zip, and Christie. Pure methamphetamine, the smokable form of the drug, is called L.A., or because of its chunky ice-looking crystals, ice, crystal, or quartz. The drug works directly on the brain and spinal cord by interfering with what we call neurotransmissions. Neurotransmitters are little chemicals that are naturally produced nerve cells and communicate with each other and send messages to your body when to feel good, when to feel bad, pain, sorrow, things like that. Somehow or another, and I personally believe it's the devil, the devil has allowed man to discover the drug and make it that will affect the part of your brain called dopamine, and that affects the pleasure part of our lives. How did they ever figure that out? Well, I personally believe that drugs are like a door opening for Satan to get in your life. Drugs uh, open the door for demons to come into a person's life. We are living in a time when the whole world seems to be on some drug or another, legal or illegal. And you better watch that every time somebody just acts a little funny, they want to put them on some kind of drug. We're moving toward a society that literally is going to live off drugs. It is produced and sold in pill form, capsule, powder, and chunks. Methamphetamine was developed in the last century from its parent amphetamines and was originally used for nasal decongestant. That was the original purpose of it in extremely small doses, bronchial inhalers and things like that, and obesity to help people lose weight, diet pills. Seizures of labs out in the Midwest went from 44 in 1995 to 500 in 1997.
That number now is like way major, probably a hundred times more than that. It can be smoked, taken in, in transly, uh, snorted. It can be interjected or injected orally or injected into the vein. The drug alters your mood in different ways depending on how it is taken. Then if somebody experiences an intense rush or some kind of a flash that only lasts for a few minutes and described as very pleasurable. Why do people get on drugs? What causes a person to get on drugs? Athletes and students many times start using meth because of the initial heightened physical ability and performance the drug produces, maybe to do better in some kind of sport. Blue-collar workers may use the drug to work extra shifts, while many women, and especially young women, do it because it helps them lose weight, takes away the appetite. These labs are found in barns, garages, and other outbuildings, backs of rooms, hotel and motel rooms, storage facilities, and vacant buildings. You know the devil starts working on somebody? You see that lady that's up there a minute ago that's crying? She's in jail and never see her kids again? Do you know how she got started? She got started when she is 11 and 12 and 13 and 14, just like some of you girls here tonight. You know why there's not many? There's more... 13 and 14 year old girls here tonight than there are 19, 20, and 21 because the devil is laying a plan for you girls right now like you have no idea. I'm going to show you how it starts. Tonight, if you went in to the average home in America where teenagers lived, you'd probably see something like this. You listen carefully. You would see a teenager starting out, Lauren. This teenager would have gradually and gradually and gradually lost her way. Tonight, they're 13 and 14, 15 and 16. As we look into the average home tonight, what would we see? Over-the-counter cold and asthma medicine are taken like pseudofedrin. And that's why you can't, you can't, buy Sudafed anymore even at Walmart you can't buy it you know why you can't buy it because Sudafed the ingredients that go in it will melt down and that's what they cook meth out of persecutors are in that way they might become inactive but when methamphetamines are mixed with other drugs they become extremely dangerous. There's usually an extremely strong odor of like fingernail polish or cat urine. Large amounts of products if there's a meth lab near your house. Ladies and gentlemen, the causes of drug abuse don't start in a crack house. They start with teenagers on the phone when they're 14. All right, Lauren. Oh, my goodness. Look at this room. What a mess. How do you even find anything in here? Mom, just chill. I know where everything's at. It's fine. My goodness. I can't believe this. You are always on that phone. I'm going to have to take your phone if you don't start cleaning up your room. Mom, it's my room. I can do whatever I want. Just forget about it. Lauren, 
You are, you are so selfish, just like your dad. Next thing I know, you're going to be on drugs. Are you taking drugs? No, quit asking me that. Just get out of my room and leave me alone. Well, if you don't get this room cleaned up, I'm going to have to take that cell phone. God, my mom is driving me crazy. She thinks she can run my life. I'm 14, I can do whatever I want. And she is not taking my cell phone. That's where the devil's plan starts. I told you about the cause of crystal meth. Secondly tonight, let's look at the curse. Let's look at the curse. Everybody in here already knows somebody, or you soon will, whose lives are going to be destroyed by this drug. When you begin to mix Drano and battery acid and transmission fluid and ingest in there, you have done lost your mind, brother, and you're sure going to lose if you put that stuff in you. You've heard me tell that story of these guys who broke into a, to a, a house and these thieves come through and they was ransacking this house and they was, they was uh, crack addicts and on cocaine and they looked and all of a sudden one of them seen, seen a... a, a and on the on the coffee table said Charlie, and Charlie is a street name for cocaine. And one of them said, "Cool, man, we got this." So they got it, they took it home with them, and they began to snort it up their nose. What they did not know was that these people who lived there had a dog named Charlie. They loved it so much it finally died. They had it cremated, and it had its ashes sitting on the table. And these nuts were out there sniffing dead dog bones up their nose. Now, I'm going to tell you tonight. You say, boy, that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard in my life. It ain't as dumb as people that suck real cocaine up their nose. Say amen right there. Come on now. You ain't back since this last youth rally, have you? I'm telling you, we're just getting started here tonight. Brother, if we don't turn back to God in this nation, brother, if we don't get our hearts right, we are losing a generation of young people that ain't going to have no sense here in a few years. Let me tell you about the curse. Brain scans of meth users now show major damage to axons which are long, single fibers that transmit transmits messages from cells to neurons. They appear on brain scans as though they were chopped off. In other words, when somebody's on crystal meth, when they have a brain scan, it looks like these neurons just something been cutting them with scissors. The drug literally destroys it. No other drug does it like that. They grow back in mangled clumps, but their configuration was greatly changed. The result is there's going to be a brain, a change in brain wiring that may be permanent and can cause delusions, schizophrenia, depression, all the researchers say. You're going to have headaches and depression and anxiety. It's very apparent, they say, that your ability to think is compromised and is, is much differently than people who use opiates, alcohol, and things like that. The reason is that methamphetamine actually penetrates the brain synopsis while cocaine, heroin, and, and alcohol don't. And say, ladies and gentlemen, methamphetamine users often suffer schizophrenia. Worst of all, the studies are showing that it alters your brain and it gives you brain damage and you go crazy. I heard of a man not just the other day that there was cooking up a batch of meth he leaned over to smell it like this. He got a whip of it. It went in his nose and into his system, and his mind left him like that. He's a vegetable tonight. He'll never be able to think again. He'll never be able to make decisions. The curse is upon him. The curse of demons. Uh, the director of the Matrix Institute about drugs said, quote, you have literally changed the landscape of the human brain. Studies shown that monkeys they give meth to on 10 doses of methamphetamine suffer a, dear, a severe uh, reduction of the dopamine, a body chemical that allows you to feel pleasure and memory and boost concentration.
unless something is done, they say, we're going to have a whole generation of brain damaged people. We are losing sanity and destroying potential. By the way, that's just exactly what the devil wants. Scientists say that this drug is irreversibly damaging the brain, leading to depression and schizophrenia. The pupils are dilated. The rapid speech often occurs, followed by slurred speech, rapid or irregular heartbeat. Amphetamine injections create an increase of blood pressure, heart attacks, and strokes. As the drug wires up, you go way down. Listen, a man who's been using uh, methamphetamine for many years, he said he's gone crazy. He said, I have accepted the fact that I have brain damage. If I hadn't have stopped, I'd have wind up in a mental ward. He said, you must read the same page three or four times just to comprehend it. He said, I go through days of concentration when I don't even know what's going on. You literally go crazy. They said they were so hooked that he would grind his teeth and many times go right through the teeth into the jawbone. He had to have a place of his jawbone replaced by a piece of his hip bone. And then he'd be out in public, rip his clothes off out in public. You know that's a sign of demon possession. In the Bible, the man out there in the Bible who wore no clothes was demon possessed. I'm telling you tonight, and some of you parents are sitting here tonight saying, why is he telling us all this? This don't affect us. Yeah, I'll bet you it affects sitting close to you. Listen, these kids see a lot more and know a lot more than you think. And ladies and gentlemen, tonight, it's absolutely in our schools. It's on the school buses. It's in the classroom. It's in people's pockets. And if somebody don't stand up and say, no, it's wrong, it's wrong, it'll destroy you. The devil will take your mind. You won't be able to get saved and then concentrate and call on God in your right mind. The devil put a curse on you put a curse on you that's the curse listen ladies and gentlemen several providers describe methamphetamine as abuse as the hardest to treat of all drug users some people never recover because prolonged use causes changes in the brain willpower alone will not cure a meth addict now, some of you tonight are sitting here tonight and you're on drugs. And it may be this drug or some other drug. And every day you tell yourself, I'm going to quit. I'm going to quit. I'm going to stop. Next week, this is my last time. But I'm telling you this evening, you're not going to stop by yourself. They have studies have shown that willpower cannot do it. The worst part of the curse that I'm going to talk about tonight is the curse on the little children that are around drug users. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight, there's a little boy out there somewhere tonight. His name is Junior. His mother used meth about her pregnancy. And when that little boy arrived in this world, he was a jerking meth addict capable of crying for nearly 24 hours a day. He would just lay in his bed and scream. When he was born, he had the shakes and cried a lot, said his grandmother, who now cares for the eight-year-old child. He was two when I got him, she says, who has custody of the child in Riverside County and asked that he not be identified. He was traumatized. He just pointed at things and screamed all the time. That little boy's life is ruined because of mama and daddy's sin. And let me tell all you mothers here something tonight. You think you can go out and party and live it up or and get drunk and, and you'll pay for it in your kids one of these days. It'll come back to you. It'll come back to you. That Bible said be sure your sin will find you out. That Bible said, it'll come one of these days, your heart will be broke. You'll say, God, what have I done? What have I done? It ain't going to be worth the pleasure you're feeling right now. It's a curse. It's a curse. It's a curse. Shortly after she got junior, psychiatrist evaluated him, and they said he can't concentrate, he's paranoid, and he has difficulty remembering basic facts and suffers anxiety attacks. 
the boy has the cognitive skills of a child under three years old. He can only count to 14. And he cannot remember the shapes of his numbers. He has a speech impediment combined with a fast rate of talking that makes him almost impossible to understand. Dressed in a little white shirt and brown pants and thick glasses, he labors going from right to left trying to write his name. Finally, a vague outline of Junior appears. He writes his numbers backwards. He says, I'm seven, and next year I'll be six. His brain. You've heard me preach about that, when things go backwards. Why here, preacher? Why here at church? We're all good church people. Listen, we are saved. We're on our way to heaven. But if God would touch some one young person here tonight, and keep them from going down this path. It'll be worth its effort. Let's check in with Lauren just a few months later and watch how the devil progresses. You have not done one thing that I asked you to do about cleaning up this mess. I have no choice but to take your cell phone. No, you're not taking it from me. It's mine. Hand it over. No. I pay the bills. You are going to have to stop talking on that cell phone to that boy. Is he making you act this way? No, I you don't, don't even know, know him. him. I don't know his family. You're not going to do anything I ask you to do anyway, are you? Hey, what are you doing tonight? Oh, nothing. Matt's just going to pick me up later on tonight. You want to come? Yeah. Crystal meth? Yeah, I tried it last week. So good. You should try it. I don't know what's in it. Yeah. Matt gets it from some guy at the high school. Well, I'm going to start getting ready, and I'll come by and pick you up later. All right, bye. The effects on children tonight are unbelievable. They say that kids are in a household where this drug is being used, might as well be taking it themselves. And all over trailer parks and apartment buildings and houses all over this country, there are little three and four year olds running through the house inhaling and smelling and becoming addicts. That's the sad part. 35% of children found in meth lab homes test positive for toxic levels of their chemicals in their body. It damages their kidneys, liver, eyes, and skin. One in every six meth labs that are busted, discovered there because of a fire or explosion, people get killed, the mouth blow up in their face. Children in meth using families also face hazards such as hypodermic needles and razor blades, dangerous animals movie traps are there to protect the drug dealers and the children are the ones that have to suffer there was methamphetamine crystal meth found in the family of Ashton Parrish who died at 15 months of age from severe headaches after the state returned him to his birth mother the state gave him back to his mama. He's 15 months old and died from head injuries. Jewel Newland was only three months old when her meth-laden father, James Dean Newland, picked her up and then fell on her. What the police affidavit called a woof. Baby Jewel was bleeding from the mouth, but no one took her to the hospital for 14 hours. She died. She died. You say, preacher, I think that's cool. I want to get high. I'm going to get high tonight. I'm going to live it up. You say, can't you support drugs? No. Meth would be okay if it wasn't for the children abused, for decency refused, for wrong excused, for Satan amused, for lives misused. 
for minds confused. Meth would be okay tonight if it wasn't for the dishonesty, for the brutality, for the infidelity, for the immorality, for the impurity, for the non-spirituality, and the immaturity. Meth would be okay tonight if it weren't for the truth compromised, for God ostracized, for evil exercised, for God criticized, for children terrorized, for homes jeopardized, and for wrong legalized, math would be okay if it wasn't for the drunken sot, the hungry tot, the devil's knot, the mind's rot, the widow's lot, the cloning spot, the final plot. It ain't okay. It's wrong. It's sent from the devil to destroy your life. It'll run up destroying your mind, body, and soul, and you'll wake up in hell. Listen, there's young people tonight go out for a party, and they go out to live it up tonight. They're out there doing it tonight. Some of them was invited to the youth rally. Some of them chose not to come to the youth rally, and they're out there high tonight. And before this night is over, they'll wake up in hell, and they'll realize they've made a mistake, and they'll scream, God, help me. God, God help me, but it's too late for them. They had your change and they lost it. They could have been here tonight and got saved, but they said no. And they wind up in eternity tonight burning and screaming. And they was high when they died, and so they don't even know how they got there. They don't even know how they got there. I can't imagine going to a party, sniffing something, taking something, shooting something, snorting something. And the last thing you remember was feeling real good. And then all of a sudden, you wake up and there's demons. You better listen. You better listen. I know from experience, when God puts something on my heart like this, somebody here needs it bad. And God may be giving you your last chance. I'm telling you tonight. You say, oh, I'm not on that stuff, preacher. Yeah, but you're running from God, living in sin. I'm talking number three tonight. The cure of crystal meth. I talked about the cause. I talked about the curse. Thank God I'm going to talk about the cure. You know what they said tonight? They said in California has become a big test tube for research. Listen to what they say. They have. The Matrix Institute are spearheading a nationwide study to see if it can help people kick meth addiction. And they said it is no particular pharmacological treatments for dependence on methamphetamines. They said there is no treatment known to man works. They're testing different drugs. Isn't that just like them? Isn't it just like them to give you drugs to get you off drugs? I know people. There's people sitting in here tonight that I know. They give you drugs to get off drugs, and them drugs you're taking to get off drugs lead you right back to them other drugs. Say man right there. Lord, some of you grandmas as high as a kite right now on your Xanax. And I'm telling you, listen, don't you talk about the hippie out there smoking pot. I mean, you have to, you they come pray for, you You come to you, I take a back pill, head pill, throat pill, stay up pill, go sleep pill, stay down pill, get down pill, stay down pill, wake up pill, stay up pill, and then come to church and say, pray for my son, he's on dope. Now listen, brother. Hey, 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 Listen, there's a good use for medicine. Thank God for medicine. Thank God for doctors. Thank God this stuff's all right. But I'm going to tell you tonight, you don't need drugs to live off of. The devil's using it to open up doors in your head. And thank God I'm going to tell you something else. I'm not here with a sad story tonight of telling you how bad everything is. Glory to God, I know the cure. There is a cure. Jesus said he'll give you power over anything. Come to Jesus Christ. I said, let him cure you tonight. I didn't say join the church. I didn't say get baptized. I said, put your life on this altar tonight and come to Jesus Christ. The Bible said there is no temptation taking you but such is common to man. But God is faithful who with the temptation make a way to escape that you might be able to bear it. Glory to God tonight. He's here. He's real. He'll help you tonight overcome anything in your life. Listen, they put people in rehab, they put them in rehab, they come out just as bad or worse. 
You know who they meet in there? The other drug dealers, and they go see them as soon as they get out. I'm not against people trying to help people, but the answer is not at rehab. The answer tonight, brother, is in a personal faith in Jesus Christ and what He's done for you on the cross. Let me tell you a story of a young man by the name of Joshua Myers. Hi, he says. My name is Joshua Myers. I'm 18 years old, and I've been uh, in a home for nine months. I was from a little town in Oklahoma. My parents were divorced when I was a young kid. My sister, Melinda, and my twin brothers, Jesse and Jason, stayed with my dad. My sister got married and started her own family, and my dad met and married a lady named Brenda. Soon, at the age of 13, I was going camping and fishing with my cousin. Sound familiar? And my buddies. We were accidentally thrown out of the back of a truck. I suffered a back injury, collarbone, broken ankle, and road rash from head to toe. I developed a blood clot in my brain that would have killed me. They performed surgery on me that left a scar down the side of my head. When I finally recovered from the accident, I started experimenting with drugs. I started out just drinking a little and thought it was harmless just having a little fun. I was headed down to a road to destruction. From the age of 13 to 15, the addiction grew stronger until I couldn't control it. I smoked marijuana every day before and after school. No matter where I was, I was intoxicated. By the end of the ninth grade, by the end of the ninth grade, I was induced to methamphetamines through my cousin. I knew I was hooked the first time I smoked it. It wasn't long before I stuck a needle in my arm. I loved the feeling so much that I'd do whatever I had to to get it. For the next three years, I did nothing but hurt my family, steal, and watch my friends go down with me. By the age of 15 to 18, I committed grand theft, auto, and robbery. I didn't care about anybody but myself. I lost my family and dropped out of high school. My dad tried to help me, take care of me, but I took advantage of him. On July 16, 2004, my cooking partner, the man he made his meth with, and I just finished cooking meth, and we were on our way home when we were pulled over for a tail light being out. We had a large amount of meth with us. The officer searched the car with a drug dog. My partner was on parole at the time for manufacturing meth, and I realized what I'd got myself into. And I was headed to prison. In court, they ordered me to go to a home to give me one last chance, a Christian home. I only went to keep out of prison. But the second night I was there, we had a service. I got on my knees and I cried out to God for help. I hadn't turned back since. I'm on fire for Jesus Christ and I don't desire to go back to my old life. Jesus Christ is my life now and I understand that one day we'll all answer to Him. He's completely restored family and give me peace in my life that I had never known. The cure. The cure. Jesus said, I'll give you power. Power. Listen, sin is powerful, but the Lord is more powerful. The devil's got power, but God has more power. That drug's got a hold of you tonight, but the Holy Ghost of God has got something better for you this evening. I'm telling you tonight, whatever your addiction is, whether it's drugs, alcohol, whatever it might be, the Lord said, I'm come to set you free. You'll know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. Wouldn't you love to walk out of here tonight a free man? Wouldn't you love to walk out of here tonight saying, I'm free, I'm free, thank God. The nightmare's over. I don't have to worry about going to jail or prison. Oh God, help me. I don't want to die like this. I want to leave here tonight knowing that I'm ready to meet Jesus Christ. Listen. Listen. Let's check in. Give me this one light off here. The green one and the top one. Ladies and gentlemen, 
if we could see her you want to see her a few years later same girl just started out talking on a little cell phone let's see her tonight There's thousands of them doing that tonight. You just keep going down that road, you're headed down. Now, the Lord put us tonight to tell you that there is hope. There is hope. I want to show you something tonight. I didn't plan on doing this, it just popped in my heart. How many of you people here tonight? were hooked on drugs and when you got saved the Lord took them away from you. Did you raise your hand? Raise your hand. Look at that. 40, 50 people. Rehab can't say that. Rehab can't do it. Say no programs, go out the window. When you're out there and that music's playing and everybody's doing it, it's hard to say no. Tonight, this has been on my heart for weeks and weeks and weeks. I could go on and on and on, but I'm going to stop right here. There is somebody in this building who you better come to God tonight. Because if you don't, you're going to wind up in jail, prison, and hell after that. We'll show you all about that tomorrow night. And I'm not joking. This may be your last chance. I want you to stand all over the building tonight. I want every head bowed. I don't want nobody leaving. You're not in that big of a hurry. Stay still. Everybody stay still. Bow your head. Thank you. Bow your head. Close eyes. Every head bowed. Every eye closed. Nobody moving. You're here tonight and you are a young person. You say, Preacher, I'm saved. But I've been hanging around with people to do the wrong thing. And I know if I don't get out of the world. But I'm going to mess up. I'm going to mess up my life. There are moments of daddies here tonight. If you don't get to church, Get your life out of God, you're going to reap it in your kids one of these days. There are those here tonight who have never been saved. You think you can never get your sin. I promise you on the authority of the Word of God. If you'll come to it, He'll save you. Teenagers, let's do business with God tonight. Father, do what I want to be done. Can't do this one that we can make you come alive with. Dear God, I beg you in Jesus' name. Lord, help me, young man. Help me, child, Lord. We won't turn back to that sin no more. We'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Let's just feel these honors tonight, young people. Come on, come on. The first night of the youth, right? Good night, you today. Just a wee day of exercise. Come on, that's right. Come on, let's just feel these honors.